My name is George English. I'm the director of Research Through People. And we make these videos to give you more idea of what may be involved in researching your family history. In this case, what we're going to do is look at the house you lived in, in the past, the people who may have lived there, the history and so on. And the best way to show this is to give you some examples of the different sort of routes that may be taken by your house. So, let's have a look. So what we've got here is in Kilmarnock, um, a house that was called Pegu Cottage, and it was the Robertson family we found living in there in the mid 19th century. Now, Pegu is a pretty unusual name, so a bit of research showed that that came from Burma. So we can only assume that the people who named it had got some Burmese connection. We haven't managed to explore that. But here we have the big house on the end of what's known as Dean Terrace. And you can see the houses along Dean Terrace there. What's interesting here, eventually the one of the Robertsons, the wife, after her husband had died, moved along to number 10 Dean Terrace. So we had a look at this. And one of the things we did, this is actually near where I live. So I went and knocked on the door of Pegu Cottage and people opened the house. And what was fascinating was they was interested in discovering the ancestry as the people that we were searching for. They didn't know anything about Pegu Cottage. The name had been changed, but they had information about the house and what had happened since. Because the Robertsons moved out in the early 1900s, and of course, 100 years later, there's a totally different family living there. And what was intriguing about this was the number of other uh, connections that we made that I, mean, uh, I personally so I live quite near Kilmarnock and I was at a function I sat next to someone and got talking and this person's grandparents bought Pegu Cottage from the Robertsons in around 1920 and then talking to the owners now they say that the lady along the Lowe's road's got some interesting information she lives at number 10 and so we went and had a chat with her and, would you believe, she had all sorts of old documents from the past with the Robertson's name on. So here we see a disposition in 1920, Robert Curry Robertson, uh, on behalf of the late Alexander, his father, in favour of James Robertson. So actual documents from the past to do with the family. And she had all sorts of fascinating old photos. And for instance, here is Dean Terrace with an old tram. And just across from the house is Dean Park. And she had photos through the ages in a way. And what was fascinating was the way the trees had grown up through time. So, of course, we went back to the, the Robertson descendant now. And absolutely fascinating that this could be brought to life in this sort of way. So let's get another example, the other end of the country. So here we are in Canterbury, of course, a very well-known place. And the Connor family lived at Northgate in Canterbury. Now, Canterbury, of course, is famous for its cathedral, where, of course, Thomas Becket was killed. History going way back to Roman times. And it was a, a gated city, a walled city. So, in fact, if we look here, what I've got is a Google Earth map. That's one thing we use a lot when we're researching to show exactly where a family lived. And I've got a map from the 1670s. And you can see in the map of the 1670s, here is the wall of Canterbury that goes round um, was built in the past and there were various gates and so at North Gate is here um, going way back and you can see on the modern map there's Canterbury Cathedral of course so famous and that's on the map and there's where Northgate was and you can see where the wall the walls away now in most cases etc but that helps people to visualize a what it's like now and b what it was like in the past um, now Northgate is interesting, it's got a whole history. Now here's a, a painting from, or a, a drawing from about 1900, stagecoach and so on. But we actually know a lot about the history of Canterbury and we very often research this for ancestors. And one of the fascinating things about Canterbury, you probably know about Thomas of Becket, but in the 16th century during the Reformation, there was a lot of persecution of Protestants in France, the Huguenots, and Walloons and others, etc. And a lot of those refugees came across to Canterbury and were actually allowed to worship in the crypt of Canterbury Cathedral. Again, here's an old map from about 1580s. So you can see very definitely the walled city. Now, 
bit of history, so let's quickly zoom in on these refugees. They lived near the North Gate, given that sort of empty houses, and the church maintained the orphans. These people, of course, were refugees, they're widows and elderly, so they made sure that people were okay financially. Um, the elders visited the flock on a regular basis and collected money for the thing, um, clothing and funds. These people lived very often in the Netherlands, the, the low countries, what we now know as Belgium, um, and they may have had to go home for various reasons. And but we could go on and on, but <laughs> an interesting thing, when we records of people in the past, if they were up before the law, then they might be recorded. <laughs> the most common misdemeanor was... So you could see how history and so on, these people's ancestors, such a lot of history for where they live. And going to visit, going to walk in your ancestors' footsteps is one of the great pleasures. So let's take, I live in Mocklin. And one of the things we have, we have every other month, we have a, a, a newsletter, The Echo. And I was talking to the e editor some time ago, and I said, why don't I do a column, your Mocklin house through time. Because of course I had clients whose ancestors lived in Mocklin. So here's an example of a couple of pages. And the very first one I did, the um, person, the Learmont family, he'd been a baker. And one thing's been fascinating with this, the number of long-term Mocklin residents who've come up to me and said, gosh, I remember that. Or no, no, it wasn't like that. So in this case, the what was the bakers, people remembered, but is now actually an ice cream shop. Um, what I've now started doing very often is taking certain roads in uh, Mocklin. Now the new road is interesting. When a road is first built, it may be called the new road. And in fact, the road into Mocklin from Kilmarnock in this case was called that at first. It's, the name has now been changed. And I moved on from there to actually um, examples with the road, what's the linkage. So, you may know Rabbi Burns came from Mockley, lived there for a couple of years, and the pub he went to was called Poozy Nancy's. That was the name of the, <laughs> the good lady who, who ran the pub. And he's got a very famous poem mentioning Poozy Nancy's. Now, there's old photos, and in Mockley we're particularly lucky. Now, here's actually a photo from the 1870s, and you can see people in front of Poozy Nancy's, um, and one on the right there a bit... Um, a bit vague, aren't they? And this is because in the old days you had to stand still for something like two or three minutes to be captured. These ghosts will have moved. And what's in it? We have a Facebook page in Mocklin, and so post on there, and people come in, and you know, this is the latest one. Someone reads it, I said, Well, what about the ghosts? And of course, a bit of humour's gone about was that after they've been drinking in Poozy Nancy's or not. But again, you know, our ancestors, what had happened, and it's become quite a thing in Mocklin now that people look for this and that they come up with things. People come up to me and they tell me things I didn't know, and particularly those people who've been there a long time. So I hope that gives you a flavour of what may come out of researching your family history or your house. Please feel free to get in touch. Absolutely free. What we say to you is send us brief details of what you know about your family. We'll have a look <clears throat> and then we'll come back to you with the options we suggest and, and the fees involved. We've made a lot of videos you can see on YouTube. <clears throat> there are contact details if you want to send us an email or actually give us a ring. Delighted to hear from you. Thanks very much for listening.